Okay, so welcome back to this video in which we're discussing Edmund degradation, which is a biochemical technique uh, used to synthesize, uh, sorry, not to synthesize, to uh, sequence uh, proteins, basically, to find out the amino acid uh, sequence uh, or the primary amino acid sequence of a polypeptide. Okay, so, so far what we did is we took our polypeptide, we reacted it with phenylisothiocyanate, which reacts with the amino terminus of the polypeptide. So it only reacts with the first amino acid in the polypeptide because only the first amino acid has this amino terminus free, right? Uh, then we've seen how uh, if you add acid into the uh, mixture of phenylisothiocyanate and your polypeptide, it will trigger this reaction here, the, the conversion of this into this. Now this is an unstable intermediate because the sulfur has this positive charge. So what basically is going to happen is that sulfur is going to nick the electrons out of this double bond. So two of the, basically, uh, in, if we look at one of the, this double bond consists of two single bonds. So if we look at one of the single bonds, the single bond consists of one electron from carbon and one electron from sulfur. So sulfur is basically going to take both electrons back. So one of them belongs to it, but it's gained another one. So that neutralize that new electron that it's taken neutralizes its positive charge. The problem is it's now nicked an electron from this carbon, so the carbon inherits the positive charge. So what happens now is that the carbon nicks electrons off the nitrogen, and it takes the two electrons from this bond between the nitrogen and this hydrogen, and, it now, and they now become a bond between the nitrogen and the carbon. So basically, nitrogen keeps its electron, but it takes this electron, the carbon takes this electron from the hydrogen, and you takes it as its own, and then forms a double bond with this nitrogen. Then what happens is the hydrogen goes back off, and that's the proton that you took from uh, the acid in the first place. So now the acid has been regenerated, basically. Okay, so let's draw that update. Right, so... Try, I'll try and keep the um, same things in the same position. So here is the phenyl ring here, the benzene ring. There we go. And then we have this same nitrogen and hydrogen there. Now, here's this carbon, which is now doubly bonded to the nitrogen there, and now singly bonded to the sulfur. Uh, then we have this carbon off down here with the hydrogen and the R group of our first amino acid still there. And now uh, you have finally a carbon completing the five-member pentagon ring. And then we have this hydroxyl group down here. And then the um, what's left of the polypeptide, so the second amino acid, and then onwards. So here we go. R prime, the carbonyl group, and then the rest of the polypeptide down there. Right, so that's the next step. So in effect, this was just an intermediate step. This was details. Uh, this going to this is the reaction that the proton catalyzes. The proton goes into the molecule to make this positively charged intermediate, and then it leaves the molecule to leave us with a, neutrally, uh, a neutral molecule at the end. Right, the next thing that happens is that uh, the hydroxyl group here, basically, uh, starts to break down. So what happens is if I draw this out as an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen, this consists of an electron from the hydrogen and an electron from the oxygen. Basically, oxygen is going to keep its electron, but the carbon is going to nick off with the electron from the hydrogen. So you're going to form a bond between carbon and oxygen. These electrons are basically going to go and form a bond between carbon and oxygen. Then what you'll end up with is a proton here, and you'll end up with carbon bonded to five things. So what happens is that this bond breaks. So the two electrons in this bond then go to the nitrogen. Now the nitrogen is negatively charged, basically. So it takes on this proton. OK, so let me, let me draw out that stage here. So let's go upwards to here. Right, so here is the phenyl ring here, again. And then you have the nitrogen and the hydrogen as so. Then you have the carbon doubly bonded to the nitrogen. So everything here has remained exactly the same. The carbon bonded to the sulfur. Then downwards you have this carbon and this carbon up here, which is exactly the same. 
And now we have to look at what's changed. So what's changed is that you now have this carbon doubly bonded to the oxygen. So we put our double bond with the oxygen. And there's, it's no longer bonded to this nitrogen. Instead, what we now have is this amino group here. And then uh, the rest of our second amino acid of the polypeptide. So it's R prime group, it's carbonyl group, and then the rest of the protein. So effectively, what you have now done is you've broken off the rest of the protein. This is the second amino acid and the rest of it going along there. So now what we've got is a molecule that was derived from the first amino acid and just the rest of the protein. So we're now going to use this molecule here to determine what our first amino acid was, basically. Now, uh, we don't directly analyze this molecule. What we do is we slightly alter this molecule a little bit. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me a second.